Kathy, it is absolutely wonderful to speak to you. Can I ask you one question? How are you still managing to look so young after all this time? <laughs> I remember Sister Sledge being in the charts when when I was about ten years old. Okay, <laughs> and I and you were my favorite. You were my favorite. I have to always, uh, you know. But then, uh, but then, you know, you look younger than me now. How did you? How have you managed that? Well, first of all, Andy, thank you very much. I always say, I always say it's the flamaldehyde soaks. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, you know, I think it's doing what we love, right? I get, I get to do what I love all my life, so it keeps you young. It, it, it does. does. You're coming to Cardiff in uh, in in Wales. Have you been to I Cardiff am. before? Uh, you you're headlining the Uptown Festival. I'm so hyped. It I have, it's been a while, but yeah. um. I love it, and I, I'm I'm hyped. Everyone's hyped. The whole band, I, you know. I always say the family band. We're all up there. And um, what I love the most is being able to sing all of these hits the way we know and love them. And that's the best part yeah. because people get to sing it along with me. For anyone who might not be familiar with the Sister Sledge story, give me a little bit about where you all came from and and, and how you came to be, so to speak. Well, we're originally from Philadelphia. I live outside of Philadelphia now, East Coast and the United States. Um, we're all from Philly. Will Smith, Jill Scott, that whole thing. <laughs> Philadelphia <laughs> sound. Um, grew up um, singing music like all the time with my sisters, harmonizing. Our grandmother was an opera singer, so we would learn these really intricate harmonies which I really thought, Andy, that everyone could do. I thought, like, what, you can't harmonize? That's like talking. Yeah. And um, so we got a chance to experience singing at a very young age. I was, and I'm not kidding, when I, I was around three years old doing harmony with my sisters. And um, and then someone's band walked out on them when I, I think I was around 12 then. And the neighborhood was like, yo, you guys should go do that show because you sing. And I was like, we do. <laughs> but I'm telling the fun side of this, but really we actually ended up performing at this event and it seems like we never look back you know it was like it was destiny we always performed and then from there we did a, a production deal with a young team of producers Phil Hurt and Tony Bell and that record became number one I was 13 years old but that record became number one in your country called Mama Never Told Me yeah. and again like we never looked back we had these hit records in other countries I was a real life Hannah Montana because I would I would do these massive concerts and then go home and and go go to school, get on the bus, go to school. And um, but it helped me to keep a balance throughout my lifetime. So we had these hits in other countries, and then came along Nile Rogers and the late Bernard Edwards from Chic, and the rest is history. Because We Are Family Project became such a global, worldwide hit, and still to this day. I always say it's a gift that keeps on giving. It's generational. Like it just keeps going to the next generation. Yeah. And I feel like it has kept us timeless. I was looking at your um your your chart back catalogue earlier. 111 weeks on in total on the UK charts with with, with lost in music alone. You know, which wow. I, I, wow. I, I mean I mean that was three se three separate occasions that charted over here. We are family charted on four separate occasions as well, didn't it? I mean yes, it did. Did, did did you ever get fed up of performing those songs? Never. Tired? No. I and to this day, I know this sounds crazy, but it's never the same if you think about it. It's always new because it's a different crowd. I my I you know, our grandmother who used to Again, she's the one that gave us a huge appreciation for music. And she's the mentor to us. And she used to always say, never look at it like if you have 10,000 people in the audience, it's more like 10,000 individuals because each person is taking it in their own way. And so because of that, it's new to them. Even if yeah. you might've seen me sing it last week somewhere, but this whole performance is totally different from what you saw before. And so it keeps it relevant. And um, because of that, I started producing a lot of concerts for festivals. Seeing how relevant the music is, I started making sure the production is just as relevant. The music, the dance, the film, you know, mm -hmm. having family up there with me. It's important because I feel like um, I see a whole new market sometimes, but I feel like it's important to to stay relevant with 
with your music because if your music is timeless, you got to be timeless. 